What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Place here and this is a question I get asked quite a bit as far as how to have fantastic video and audio settings. I want to share it with you guys on exactly the specific gear that I use for my video, my audio settings, overall editing, things like that, so that you guys can make fantastic videos yourself. If you're stumbling across this video and you have no idea who I am, I do a lot of gaming videos and uh, I also have a lot of knowledge as far as video and audio production. So I'm going to be going over some specifics and I implore you to watch the video all the way through because I'm going to be going over some really handy and nifty things and referencing back and forth and sorry about that. I'm also going to be leaving a link in the description down below for most of the gear that I've used throughout this entire video. After you've watched it all the way through, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them. I'm going to be switching over to my iPhone now, which isn't going to be as fantastic settings, but I want to share with you guys my exact setup and how I do what I do. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. First things first. Here's my desk. I actually have two computers here. Here I have the 5K iMac, and then right next to it I have a 4K screen with a custom-built PC. Most of my pre-made videos are all done on the Mac, and most of my live streaming is done on the PC. However, there is a little integration between both. Right here in my tiny little monitor, this is the actual gameplay for my Switch. And the Switch I have, well, of course this is mounted. The Switch I have mounted back here with cool, dope NES custom skin. The Switch just chills right inside of there, and then it's actually going through right here. I have the Elgato HD 60S. This is just a USB capture card, and then the video goes from here into there, into the screen, and the USB goes into the PC to capture the actual video. Whenever I want to capture video on the PC, if I'm not doing a live stream, I'm just using the built-in Elgato software called Game Capture HD. When it initiates, it's going to give me what I'm playing in the game right there. Now, because it's a USB card and not one of the PCIe cards, there is a delay. So, like, if I move my character a little bit right now, you're not going to see that for, like, a second or two. So, you can't actually play off of it if you have the, uh, the USB card. Instead, you still have to have an actual live stream of the HDMI feed to you, so you see what's going on. Now, once the video is all captured and everything else, it uploads via Dropbox to my shared Dropbox folder between both computers, or I could just, you know, go through the network and pull the file if it's really big. But if it's tiny, I don't even deal with it. So that's to capture gameplay footage, and then to capture video up here on my camera, I recently just upgraded to the Canon EOS 5D Mark III, which is a fantastic camera. I have a prime lens on here. Now, one of the most important parts of using a Canon DSLR to actually do video stuff is it's not really designed for video. I mean, it does fantastic video, but it's not made for video. Actually, I think there's laws in Germany that specify certain things that allow it to not be done. So like only a certain amount of time can be captured on an SD card and then it'll just stop recording altogether. So one of the most imperative things is a custom firmware called Magic Lantern. You install it with the SD card, only works on some versions of the firmware for the Canon. So it's a whole big pain in the butt thing to do, but it's so, so worth it. My previous one is right here, which is the uh, EOS 60D, which is a fantastic camera. You can get these on eBay for like 200 300 bucks with a uh, with a lens on them. This is just a simple aftermarket Tamron 17 millimeter lens It goes up to I think 50. This is a fantastic camera you Just set it up on a tripod have the angle set at you and then what's really nice about the 60d Even as a starter camera or even for more advanced is that the screen pops out and flips around completely so while it's chilling up here, you can actually see what's going on with the camera. And as I mentioned, Magic Lantern is super important because you can make it so it just keeps recording through. And with the 60D with the Magic Lantern, you're going to have, I think, like 14 missed frames between files. Maybe it's, it's even up to two seconds. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, fantastic camera for capturing fantastic video. Really affordable. So if you're thinking about picking up a DSLR, you don't know much about them, so you don't want to, you know spend crazy money you can pick up a 60d for cheaper than a lot of the rebel cameras on the market like the rebel 3 4 and 5 ti or, or whatever those models are but yeah great camera if you have a camera that doesn't have a flip outable screen then uh it, it's really important to still see exactly what you're doing and a lot of them can plug in via hdmi or with a usb cable and that way you're going to be able to plug into your computer and i have the eos utility set up that way I have a live view of everything that I'm doing in the actual video. 
So as you see right there, that's me. That's the camera. That's actually what it's seeing in almost real time. So gives me a good idea. And I pretty much just use this to uh, <clears throat> do my settings, make sure I'm in focus, start, stop, things like that. Or if I really wanted to, I could also picture in picture for the HDMI feed directly from the camera if I just wanted something bigger and able to monitor everything going on. So that shows me everything going on with the Magic Lantern interface, so it tells me my current ISO and everything else, all the custom stuff that I have done to it. That's video, that's the game. Next thing is the audio, and I am a huge audio snob, super, super big. Um, so I have a fantastic microphone. This is made by Blue, uh, the same company who makes the Snowball, which is a really basic, cheap USB microphone. If you're just starting off, it's not bad. It gives you some custom settings, um, and that just plugs in via USB, and then, you know, set it on a stand or whatever else. I think it comes with, like, a small metal stand. But something that people don't realize is that your audio isn't going to sound good right out of the box, in which case you need a DAW, a dedicated audio workshop for it. I use Ableton Live because I'm super familiar with it. It's a great piece of software. It's not that expensive, and if you're using a USB microphone directly into the computer, you could get away with it and then pull it up. And then super important is knowing how to mess around with your settings, and, and then you could use a gate, which is super important so that anytime you're not saying anything, you're not gonna have that background hiss noise in the room. So like if I select an area that I'm working on, you actually don't hear anything. Volume is up all the way. But if I turn gate off, you hear that giant gasp of air that I'm trying to take like I'm suffocating right before I project really loud. You're not going to get any of that, which is what's going to make your audio sound really clean. And then from there, it's about knowing how to use um, an EQ. Make sure you get rid of your harsh frequencies, like right around uh, 4500K. You probably don't need that much bass and then um, compression, and then what I do for my videos is, is really important. I use a limiter on there with a really, really big gain. I use a big gain on it that way. Anything that I say that's not like super loud and everything else going on is gonna be picked up the same volume and projected. Unlike you do with actual audio production and TV and things like that, where you want a big dynamic b b between your highs in volume and then your lows in volume. When it comes to YouTube, you just kinda wanna hear all of this at the same volume. So if I don't have that limiter on, or tell you what, let's just do a full dry. This is what it sounds like without any EQ or anything. What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Place here. And then once I put my entire chain on it, the gate, the EQ and everything, it sounds like this. What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Place here. And even though it just sounds a little bit louder because it's coming through the phone, but in the actual DAW, you're gonna hear a dramatic difference. Now. Just hearing that built into the speakers on the computer, it's not going to give you an accurate sound. Um, in order to hear it properly, you're going to need studio monitors, which I, here I have the Atom A7Xs, which is a super, super high-end monitor, but you can get away with the Rockets, uh, the Rocket speakers. I'm sure you've seen them. They have the, the yellow cone in between. They're fantastic for what you're probably going to be doing, or even a pair of like really, really flat headphones. Now, the point of this is you want to hear it in as rough of an audio setting as possible. That way, when people hear it on their system, it sounds like what they want. Now, if you're using USB mic, you plug right into the computer. If you're using a non-USB microphone, which I'm going to recommend, um, this is the Blue Mouse. This is probably a $1,600 microphone, so you probably don't need to go that crazy, but it's a large diaphragm. If he's chilling right there, he's gonna be able to hear the pattern of volume coming from here to pretty much here. So anywhere that I'm going to be in this area, you're gonna hear a good overall sound of it. And that's super important. You're gonna be able to pick all that up. If you're using a microphone that isn't powered, you're going to need to use a, um, an audio interface. Here I'm using the Native Instruments Complete, which is a fantastic sound card. It's really, really versatile, so it could be a sound card for your entire computer. Also, there's a button back here. See that 48V? It provides phantom power for non-powered uh, microphones. That is kind of the secret to having good audio. And then once your audio is good and your video is good and your gameplay capture is as high quality as possible, then it's time to do all the editing. Now, I'm using a Mac so because I love Final Cut Pro. I'm all about Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is, they, they basically made iMovie into a much more streamlined, easier to do thing. And so right here at the start, 
If you're not familiar, I'm talking about the items that are announced for DLC pack one of the expansion pass. The now that's all of it put together. This is, you know, my gameplay caption is a tiny little thing up here in the corner. If I disable that, then it's my video. Uh, the colors are gonna look probably really, really crappy coming from the camera too here. It doesn't look nearly that orange in real life, but it, it's also somewhat important to have some idea on what you're doing for color correction, especially if you're investing the money in a DSLR. Oh, there we go. That's, that's the accurate color of what it looks like. So yeah, you're gonna wanna mess around with the settings in there and get your face to look how you want it to look. Now let's talk about music in a video. And I'm not talking about music videos, obviously you're there specifically for that. I'm talking about having a little bit of music in the background, just to, just to uh, add, add a little bit of add a little bit of body to what's going on. If you're not familiar, I'm talking about the items that are announced for DLC pack one of the- Now, without that background music, it still sounds good, but it sounds a little, little less full. If you're not familiar, I'm talking about the items that are announced for DLC pack one of the expansion pass. The things that- Yeah, and because I do my audio settings, like you can even see my levels. They are always all the way up. And the important part about that is you're gonna be able to have your music at a constant volume. Like mine is about anywhere from minus 25 to minus 18 decibels, depending on what it is that I'm doing. Uh, my intro, that's something that I made in After Effects, which <laughs> that's like a, a five hour video that I'm not gonna be getting that much into. But in the meantime, like when I first started, I got an animation done on Fiverr and they did a fantastic job for what I needed it for. So all in all, it's about laying things in and then just kind of always looking back at the video and seeing what you want to achieve. What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Place here, and today there's some fantastic news. So yeah, and even that little bit of music at the beginning makes it sound so much more powerful. And then also from a branding point, you're gonna want that, that recognizable sound. So when someone watches your video, they're like, oh, that's his video, because I recognize it. There's a video cue, there's an audio cue. What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Place here, and today there's some fantastic news. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of one of the most important parts. Oh, something else to talk about, lighting. Lighting is super important when you're recording your videos. So like, if I go to capture my video right now, I'm gonna be dark, I'm gonna be blown out. And if you know anything about a camera, you're gonna have to mess around with the ISO, the aperture, the exposure, the focus, everything. And if your surroundings are too dark, you're gonna get an inaccurate color of what it's supposed to be. So I actually have right here um, a wireless power setup, so boom. The, the phone is probably just three giant glowing orbs right now, but yeah, the importance of having that light on your subject, I'll even flip this around real quick. There's a lot of importance in making sure that your video is well lit while you're recording. So this is my video without the lights on. This is my video with the lights on. Now, it's a lot more harsh, it brings out a lot more detail. You take a lot of that out in post, or depending on the type of camera you're using, like here the front facing camera on the iPhone 7 Plus is super sharp and super crisp. Also, it's pretty cold of a color, as opposed to if you're doing your settings and you want it to look a lot warmer, then, uh, then you're fine. But without the light on, it just kind of seems blown out. Actually, it's getting the light above me too much. And that's the reason I kind of have like this glowing right here. That's that's the importance of lighting. And I can't really stress it enough. Like when I had my lower end camera, even though I had all this light on, well, I just picked up this third one not too long ago, but for a while I was just using this left one and this right one, which by the way, these are uh, 6,000K bulbs and I have diffusion panels on it. I have diffusion panels on this guy up here as well, which are super important. That way you don't, don't get a really harsh light. You want a nice warm glow. Great example right here between lighting off and lighting on. Uh. Off, on. Like that's perfect video. <gasps> Oh, hiccups. Like I know that you could get the makeup, uh, the makeup lights like PewDiePie. He uses this one. Uh, I think it's called the Aura. It has three rings of LEDs in there. But then you get the ugly halo patterns in your eyes, and I always thought that just looks like shit. So you definitely want to avoid looking like shit. <laughs> That's gonna be the quotable from this video. You definitely want to avoid looking like shit. Now once it's all rendered out, one of the most important things that a lot of people don't realize is when you render out from your software, you want as huge of a file as possible. Like you want every two minutes to be at least a gig. 
And then once it's that large of a file, you're gonna be able to upload it to YouTube. YouTube does all their processing and then optimizes it for it to look as best as possible. So like, I have a 5K monitor here, which is better than pretty much every single TV on the market. So depending on what people are doing for their settings, if they're gonna be watching it at 1080, 720, things like that, that, that all makes a big difference. That right there, that's the magic to getting a great produced video, all done, post-editing, things like that. But if you're here for streaming, first of all, I'm sorry that it took this long to get around to the part of the video that's all about streaming. Um, but what I do is I have my microphone, which you can use your USB mic or you could get a fancy mic that goes through a sound card. I'm actually putting it inside of Ableton. And then, like, if you look right here, you're going to see those levels spike up. Yeah, they spike up to the red. That's how I know that it's being fed through correctly. Um, I have a whole bunch of compression and chains in there. Also the gate, gate is super important. Uh, so like if it gets really hot, I'm in New Jersey, so some days it's like 90 degrees, the air conditioning needs to be on. I don't have central air, sorry, I'm broke ass bitch. Um, if I have my gate settings proper, then I'm gonna be able to have the air conditioning on and you don't hear it, and that's, that's magic. That's super important. If you're gonna do this for one reason alone, let it be that. Now. Uh, in order to feed your audio from a DAW, a dedicated audio workstation, into OBS or your streaming of choice, it's really important for your output settings to be set to a digital audio cable. And if you're not familiar with that, what that basically is, is this, instead of outputting to the speakers or a Bluetooth device or your Apple TV or literally anything else, instead it's going to input to the computer itself. And then you're going to find a piece of software to capture that input to the output. So in OBS, I'm actually setting up right here my cable input. My cable input is what I have coming through that way. Like if you see the levels right here, the levels look real nice and I'm super far away from them. I'm nowhere near the microphone. But like if I'm right on top of the microphone, you see it go all the way up, but still we're not getting distorted. And that's super important. And record, 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 don't live stream. Record, test it, make sure it looks perfect, make sure it sounds perfect. If you have video audio sync issue, right here, mixer, that's gonna be able to give you a millisecond delay between everything going on, your total volumes overall. My audio input was actually faster than my webcam, so my audio input needs a 200 millisecond delay. You could also mess around with your settings and volume percentages, stuff like that. Great. I can't really explain how to Photoshop things, but you could do a fancy overlay like this, but it's, if you're starting off streaming, the first thing I'm going to recommend is, you know, get your capture card, have it on there, get a webcam. Webcams are cheap. That's like, I think it was like 120 bucks, maybe 160. They have cheaper ones for like $50. You're only going to be that big. If this was a 1080 screen, you're looking at like 240 pixels. It's going to look slightly cleaner than if you were to do something else, but that's pretty much it. Plug it all in. Obviously, you can't run off of that. You need to watch it over there. But yeah, you don't really need, when you're first starting off, all the fancy stuff, like whenever I get a subscriber, it pops up. Uh, if, if you wanna have just everything in place, really having just your video there, and then of course, adding in your webcam, like that's all you really need to start off with. And then from there, the sky's the limit. You're gonna mess around with your settings, you're gonna mess around with what you like and everything else. But yeah, that's, that's my advice as far as live streaming. Now, you don't need to run it through a DAW, but it does make your life a lot easier. It makes your sound a lot cleaner. Next, uh, also, little tiny thing in, in regard to setting up your video for uh, that, you need to hear the game. So I have this, uh, this monitor actually has an audio output which goes directly to the audio input of this speaker and then through the capture card It goes through to this computer. So it captures the game audio. There's not really much going on right now Hearing the audio is super important. Just make sure it's really really low that way You don't get a feedback loop through the microphone or hear an echo effect or use headphones Headphones work great too if you know your type of microphone is going to pick up your game audio But like I said before record 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 test it, mess around with it, see if it's the settings that you want, and then see your options from there. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope this was really helpful for the people who, you know, ask me how I do it with the audio settings and video settings. Also, when you're recording, soundproofing. Soundproofing is super important. Not necessarily soundproofing, but uh, acousticness. So, if you have empty, if you have windows, 
put up curtains, super important. If you have empty walls, get some, uh, get some cheap foam, put it on the walls. You can get on Amazon for real cheap. Uh, if you have a wall that you're gonna put stuff on, make sure there's a lot of stuff. The more clutter that you have, the more it's going to warm the acoustics. Canvas prints are actually a fantastic way to add a little bit to your acoustics. Like, even my door over here, I have foam on it. All of this, it it came from years. It came from years of knowing about audio production and video production and video editing and things like that. So you're not going to look like this when you first start. Absolutely not. You can go out and buy all this gear. You could buy a $2,400 camera plus lenses. You could buy a $1,600 microphone plus your audio workstation. But unless you know how to use it, you're not going to have fantastic results. So don't start with something super expensive. Start with that $80 microphone. Start with, you know, a second hand camera that used to be amazing seven years ago and now you can get it for 300 bucks instead of 1400 when it first came out. More than anything else, just make a video. Just make a video. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do better. I didn't know what I was doing wrong until I started doing it. I put up some videos of me playing Skyrim about three, four weeks before I made my first Pokemon video. And I really dug down in every single video that I did, I wanted to improve on. I made one video and I was like, all right, I could do this better. And then I could do this better. I could do that better. I could do this better. Comments that I got and feedback from my friends and people who watch YouTube all the time really helped me succeed in coming up with a very polished video. To the community of people who have those first comments, I thank you. When I made my first video and I put it on Reddit and I got so much shit from people that were like, oh, well you would do this bad and this bad and everything else, thank you. Because it's only once you see what you do wrong can you realize what you can do better. And the day that you stop improving is the day that you start degrading your quality. And people will notice that. So more than anything else, just focus on every single time you make a video, make it better. Make something more interactive, make something more engaging, have a different effect, have something different in your audio chain to make it sound better. Test your stuff, re-record your stuff, re-record, re-record until you think it's perfect. Don't put something out that you're not proud to say that's you. Work on something and come up with a quality that you think reflects how you want to be seen. And uh, I'm, I'm done rambling now, and I thank you so much for checking out the video. If you have questions about something gear-wise, be sure to leave it in the comments section down below. I'll do my best to answer even days, weeks, months, years from now. To everyone who subscribed and made the channel as big as it is, I want to say thank you so much. And uh, till next time, Austin John out.